Yeah, dumpster diving is an amazing thing. It's like, it's ridiculous how much food we throw away in America. Oh my God, good quality food. And it's amazing how evil people are, like in grocery stores that will take and dump bleach. I don't know if you ever heard about that. They'll dump bleach all over the food. The good food that they put in the dumpster, they'll dump bleach on it so that if anybody eats it, they get sick. Yeah. Or they just destroy the food with the bleach. Because we don't want those weird people getting in the dumpster. What do you fucking care? It's behind the store. Yeah. It's food. Like, it's just, it's, to me, it's disgusting. Ratones. It's disgusting how much food gets thrown away. Oh, yeah. Why should I go out and work an eight-hour job, an eight-hour-day job to buy food when there's this food that will be thrown away because they just, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Ew. Think about how much food when you go in the grocery store or you go anywhere. All the food they've got pre-made that doesn't get eaten, where does it go? In the dumpster. It's still good. Well, I think they, it said that like 50 to 60 percent of the food production in the United States actually goes to waste. They throw it away. Yeah, easily. Look at just the produce section. Yeah. Think about every store you go into, the rotisserie chickens, the deli, deli meats, cheeses, all that stuff. They throw that shit away before it hits expiration date. All the dairy products, all the eggs, cheese, cottage cheese, all that shit gets tossed in the dumpster before it hits expiration date because they get a tax write off for it. Well, some places I've come to understand, like Food for Less, I think it is, and uh, maybe Grocery Outlet, like what the, the uh, big big conglomerates have done is they're like, oh, it's getting close to, to sell expiration. They sell it off for cheaper. Day. They take it on, then they sell it off to someone else, right? Like the 99 cent store, and then if it's worth and it, then it goes. Them. Yeah. But a lot of them just throw it away. Yeah, it's all the all the money in it. Yeah, they get money back for it. They don't take a loss, so they're throwing it away before it even hits the expiration date. Yeah. You know, so you're going to a health food store, and you're getting shit that's primo yogurt, goat goat milk yogurt, and all this stuff. It hasn't even hit expiration date. They threw it away that night. We go dumpster dive it. It's still cold. Ice cream, not even melted. Gallons of ice cream, not melted. You know, it's for us. I'm buying, buying the raw milk for Violet, and uh, I've heard uh, from some people like some people actually prefer to have milk get sour a little bit to drink it. Really? So I've actually drank the milk, the raw raw milk, which is supposed to be dangerous, but I drink it when it's, it's like not just sour, to where turn. you're like, just oh start- my fucking god, starting to turn. But you smell it, you're like, okay, that smells a little funky, a little funky. I'm not talking like really funky. You're like, okay, it's turning. And you drink it, and it's like, no, that's a little sour. That's yeah, definitely not me sweet. Too. And drink it. I haven't been sick once. Yeah. Well, a lot of times it's the top of it, too. Once it gets exposed to oxygen, yeah. you'll find that there's a high cream content on raw milk. That It's that cream has high fat content. That shit will smell funny yeah. at the top. But if you pour the milk out you'll, in a glass, you'll find you don't. There is no odor. No, I've I poured it in a glass, and, and it like, was, and it you, was, tr- you taste it, and it's like, this is a little, yeah. a little, like again, a little bit sour. Yeah, I've done the same thing. Yeah, I've done the same thing. But uh, it's just crazy. Like, oh no, you, it's got it's full of bacteria. Die. You'll fucking you're get gonna, AIDS. You're gonna oh, die. Dude, I tell you what, <laughs> living in the desert and living the way I live right now, like I was without refrigeration for a long time. I learned a hell of a lot of stuff does not need to be refrigerated. Yeah. Eggs, for one, butter, so many things that they say need to be refrigerated. I didn't refrigerate because I didn't have refrigeration. It was fine. I was fine. I haven't been sick in a very, very long time. I don't know if you noticed or not, but yeah. I don't well, get sick. You said you did get sick a couple, like one or two times. Oh, yeah. I got. But that was bad chicken that was bad when we got it yeah. out in Slab City. It was... It was, oh, given by a church. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck that was, but everybody got really sick from that chicken. It was our Chicken's a weird thing. Poultry is a weird thing. When it's on the edge of turning, like, oh, yeah. No, what, how was some of the techniques that you used without refrigeration? Like, what did, what exactly did you eat? Did you, like, can like, the canned, like, tuna, the canned beans and stuff, like, especially in the yeah, heat, eat, did it last? You eat canned stuff when it's that hot, you don't even want to eat that much, honestly. Um, potatoes keep, uh, I'm trying to think, like a lot, lots of How'd you cook ramen. the potatoes? Um, just boil them up. Just boil them in water and... Yeah. 
Uh, lots of top ramen. Uh, God, I'm trying to think. A lot of barbecue. You just like buy stuff and cook it on the spot. Yeah. Chicken. Like we did a, a lot of community stuff. Everybody cooked together. Well, how, how did you keep your food production going though? Like, you know, with, yeah, like you'd have to go to the, somebody had to go to the store every single day or something, right? If it's that hot, like not what every, exactly did do not, a lot of people do to... Yeah, so I was just now saying, we did community thing where yeah. it's like, you know, you every third, fourth day you go to town and pick up some stuff or yeah. somebody that did have refrigeration would keep it for you, oh, okay. depending on what it was. What did you have to refrigerate? Like uh, what? Meats. Yeah. Meats were the big ones. So meats you guys did a lot of meats. Yeah. Yeah. Barbecue. Barbecue is a fun thing. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, um, eggs and potatoes, like breakfast burritos, were a big one. Breakfast you could get pretty much anywhere in almost any camp. With uh, everything was eaten with tortillas out there because you know that we didn't have to deal with dishes. Yeah. So it's like whatever anybody was cooking, tortillas, <laughs> edible plates. Or people brought their bliss, as I said, you carry your own, in your backpack, your own plate and bowl and knife and fork and spoon and whatever, and you, you uh, wash your own shit. Bring food in with you if you got it. But yeah, every night of the week during peak season, like right now, every night of the week, there's somebody hosting dinner. Yeah. And it's free. And you that was in the neighborhood you were in, like... Oh, no, all over slabs. Yeah. All over slabs. You can just go and get, you know, the, the RVers, the... the the snowbirds, they had their own shit, you know, nobody, ever, we didn't all go out there, but the hippie tattooed weirdos with the drums and whatever, <laughs> you know, go out to where the RVers are, but yeah, it's like the, every night of the week was always, or just any camp, you can walk into pretty much any camp if you're a cold person and people will feed you and house you and there's a ton of food, a ton of everything, you get everything you need, you can walk in there with nothing and be fully taken care of, no problem. Well, peak season but summertime is another story i wonder though like what what are things that you would survive on out there like rice beans like and then water's scarcity right you're saying fresh water you have to get from the islands um uh, it depends on your situation do you have cooking facilities yeah people are stupid about wood out there there's a limited amount of wood and they just keep taking the wood in their local area i'm like go way out there go walk oh, to yeah. go get some mesquite and whatever so you keep cutting the local wood that's in the area and you know you're gonna run out i'm surprised they haven't already um but you know if you've got like propane well a lot of people have propane stoves you find someone who has a propane stove bring some food hey can yeah. i cook this for all of us so rice was a big one rice potatoes pastas you know, meat if you got it veggies you know, just anything pretty much anything goes not the pussy shit where you oh let's cook the pasta and then you drain it you put it in a colander and you rinse it like I imagine it's like no you put some fucking water you throw the pasta and then you drink the fucking broth <laughs> uh, no not really I no. mean it's you drain it <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like people buy their water some people drink the canal water some people drink city water really you drink the canal water oh yeah there are a lot of people uh. that just drink the canal water not me yeah do I bought my filtered water out of the kiosk just like you do, I do over here? This is the local store there sold it by the gallon of the five gallons. So yeah, I'd add a five gallon, a couple five gallons. I would also get for everybody else. So I would pick up about 25, 30 gallons of water at a time. Yeah. And deliver it to people and stuff as a favor, you know. But uh, <coughs> the city water, like as far as washing yourself. And stuff like that like a lot of people have uh, water towers yeah you get water delivered to them so you can uh, take care of all that but as far as like i said with the canal there and everything like there's no need you just you wash in the canal you wash in the yeah. hot springs in the winter so you know you got so for that. hygiene you have that what about yeah. shitting and pissing like right you just um, piss in, in the in it's wherever, so but... dry in the desert that you just dig a hole and uh set something up it dries it dehydrates pretty quickly but yeah, yeah pretty bad situations yeah people yeah hygiene was not a really big plus but there were a lot of people that had composting toilets with uh peat moss or just like a hole and you throw some dirt and some some fire ash on top of it but yeah pretty nasty shit going on out there yeah. They just dig these deep, deep holes and then set up whatever's over it. Like, I, 
I've pooped in some pretty precarious situations, I must <laughs> admit. But you know what? Business got taken care of. That's all I cared about. What about you? I think you said there was some permaculture people out there trying to do some stuff? Mm -hmm. Aquaponics even? Yeah. What was your observance on that? Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. Idiots. Yeah. Now people trying it, you know, they had drip systems when I was back out there, you know, because I, I, it's been a couple years since I moved back from out of there. And people that set up shit and it's like I went by this last season. I was like, dead, mm -hmm. dead, dead, dead. Well, I did not see that coming. Yeah. Let's see in the desert. I know. Let's try to just like those idiots when I when I went to the hostel and had ducks. Let me get this straight. You have aquatic animals in a desert. Yeah. So yeah, I took the ducks and I released them into a wildlife area where mm -hmm. there was natural water, which I got you know, harangued for because it was like, ducks don't need water. People are like, ducks don't need water. I'm like, really? Is that why their feet are webbed? Yeah. Because they don't need water. Okay. Yeah, I, I just, I got a bunch of shit for that, but yeah, whatever. What about uh, uh, foraging and hunting and stuff out there? What was the experience with that? Well, I didn't forage or hunt, but there were people, I've, I've eaten stuff, people, jackrabbit, <laughs> Um, quail. I never got a chance to try the rattlesnake I wanted to. But yeah, there are people that catch wild stuff out uh, there. You, you, you were saying something about like catfish too in the canal? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I never got to do a catfish pick, but yeah, a lot of people uh, who were catching catfish out of the canals. Huge catfish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw how big those catfish got because it was one um, when I was there in the winter, uh, early fall, actually, we had a rain and there were these caterpillars that are rare yeah. that hatched and then they were, would crawl, were crawling all the way from the desert towards the canal and would dump themselves in the canal so the catfish would come up to eat them. And I was like, damn, I saw some huge catfish. Like as big as your arm or? Yeah, yeah. easily. They've been in there a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they would catch the catfish and they'd be hush puppies, you know, it'd be catfish bake. What yeah, this you, So quail and catfish and, and, uh, and rattlesnake rabbit. and jackrabbits? Mm -hmm. Fucking jackrabbits, they stand like... Uh, yeah. They're fucking tall, man. Yeah, and tough as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I heard they're not really good eating. No. I heard cottontails way better eating. Yeah, well, anything, anything that's like jackrabbit, think about anything in the desert. It's yeah. like they got a fight to live so it's anything wild like even you know if you get deer and elk they're very little fat on that animal compared to a domestic cow or lamb or whatever that's raised for the fact of eating what about like rats and mice little rodents uh, I'm sure they eat them uh, were they no there knowledge. though oh yeah. yeah kangaroo mice yeah cuter than fuck those little guys they're so cute Kangaroo mice. Yeah, kangaroo mice. They're like little tiny kangaroos. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the way I set up my kitchen, my pallet built kitchen, is I made sure there was no place for the mice and rats to live. But I made spaces they could come in and just grab the little crumbs and stuff and then run off and go do their thing. And like any garbage I had left over, well, I, had, I swaled my area and then I had uh, my compost area. So any garbage or trash that I had, which I had a lot of because. Um, I was the distribution center for the, the, um, my friends that did dumpster diving and there would be food that just, okay, it was dark yeah. when they were dumpster diving, not so good, like bread and stuff. So I had my area, I would take it far from where my living space and anybody's living space was and dump the bread and all this old stuff. So the rats and mice and everybody just, they kept it out there. Yeah. Ants, there were like ridiculous amounts of ants as well. Fire ants, oh my god, fire ants, yeah. Oof, those guys get you. Scorpions too. Anybody eat scorpions? Yeah, oh yeah, uh. they'll eat anything. Humans <laughs> eat everything, anything and yeah. everything goes in. I'm sure they ate the, the mice if they could catch them. I hadn't heard of anybody in particular, but I've seen a few people at them. Yeah, they look like they would pretty much eat anything. Like cockroaches and... Uh, didn't have cockroaches. Like Too yeah. hot and dry for cockroaches. Lots of mice and rats, though. 
What about plants? Is anybody uh, anything on plants that people would harvest or forage? No, people were not. The people that I had known, pretty much anybody out there, was really not into what was growing naturally out Wild there. Wild crafting. There, yeah, there was yeah. really not much you could eat anyway. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was. Uh, we we're almost below sea level. We we're just barely above sea level right there off Salton Sea, so yeah. not a whole lot growing. There was acacia, mesquite, palo verde. There were a few plants that I had looked up that were actually really good for um, stomach issues and digestion issues, which happen a lot in the desert, have happened forever in any desert. Oh yeah, like, you were telling me yeah. some stories of people yeah, animals, shitting like... Well, animals will die in, yeah. in a watershed or the water's just standing for a very long time. So it's very stagnant. So yeah, water issues, and it's amazing to me that the plants that grow in the natural areas are uh, really good for that. There's the yeah. so there's just, there's, yeah, there were quite a few things that you could use for different purposes there, but not eating. But I mean, if you go up in the mountains, the local mountains up there, if the military didn't have the chocolate mountains are called, like there's probably buck, you know, wild uh, goats. Yeah. I mean, when I'd gone taking your sister when we were homeschooling, we went to the living desert. And uh, yeah, there's a uh, deer, small deer, and then there's like the sheep, though. Yeah. There's sheep that a lot of people don't realize. Bighorn, yeah. or whatever they call them, yeah. Yeah, bighorn sheep. And yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of game. But you have to go in the higher elevations. All in all, it sounds like a fucking pretty uh, exciting life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. If it weren't for those damn meth heads, man, and their thievery, uh -huh. I don't know, I might still be out there, but I couldn't take it anymore. So what would be the... the we got the meth heads and the heat and... Like, what would be the downs? What, what's the... We talked about all the good stuff. Like, what's the so the down parts about living there is like, well, what what influenced you to not live there anymore? Like, what was the major, the the major factors if you had to list them? It's not like what I want is community in my life. That mm -hmm. is a shifting continuously, like the sands of the desert. The population shifts continuously and changes. And people would come there. It's a stopping ground for a lot of people from all over the country. You know, for the cold, they come there to meet up. Mm. You know, rainbow people and people who know each other, have known each other forever. You know, train kids and like everybody goes there because it's warm yeah. for the winter. It's tolerable. And you just get to hang out. And a lot of them living on the street are just, their life is so precarious. You know, with the police yeah. and with each other and everything. They get to go there and actually relax for a minute have a spot mm. they can chill out and not have somebody breathing down their throats they can yeah. skate they can just live they can party they can play music they can just chill for a minute but then they get they get those antsy feet and want to go travel again yeah. you know cool people amazing people but um it's a shifting population you never know who's going to be there aside from the the regulars the people that stay there um so you never know who you're going to meet so you can have a really good group one year and not so good the next year it's not like a community like i would yeah. wouldn't mind having a community where i can kind of know who i'm going to be dealing with yeah you know but i mean the majority of the people i met in slab city are just really awesome human beings you know not hard to get to know and just very sharing and supportive but like I said, everybody just takes off in their own direction. And you're yeah. invited a million different directions. You mm -hmm. want to go north, you want to go south, you want to go to New Orleans. Let's Come go, with let's me. Go there. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. You know, people that have never known each other. They've known each other for several days. And like, they'll just be like, hey, we're heading, we're going this way, you want to go? They're like, mm, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. And I, I would watch that, like four, five, six, ten people pile in a bus or a car or whatever. Like, they don't even know each other. They just met and they're like, that's cool travel together I admire the fuck out of that I really do I admire pe their their resilience with one another you know getting along with one another and shit and just I admire their resilience and like you know what 
you mouth off a little too much, you're gonna fucking get smacked in the face. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get punched in the head, or worse. And they just like, oh, I had that coming. You know, just yeah. see those young guys, especially, just walking around with a black, I mean, a blacker than fuck I, maybe two, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of a limp, and they're just like, oh, I had that coming. It's amazing. Nobody, nobody says a word. They're just like, dude, I fucking told you, man. Boom. You get fucking clocked, and it's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, in our society, they're like, oh, I'm going to call the cops, you know, like, violence and this and that. But out there, it's like some some people realize, you know what, I needed to learn a lesson. Yeah. You know, I didn't have anyone to teach me, a parent or a mentor or whatever, so they just, like, kind of appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, like I said, one of those weird things. But you're kind of answering the, my next question I had for you is, like, for... For all of all of the underdogs and people wanting to travel and go, you know, find a, a sanctuary, a place to go to, like, basically, what would you tell them, like, you know, if they're coming from Montana or New York or just anywhere, and just wanting, like, and they they get wind of, hey, there's this place called Slab City, like, what would you recommend? Because I see that as a refuge, a place, like, yeah. like hey, man, Plenty of them come do. over here. So what would just you, don't do it in what the would summer. you recommend them? Just, yeah, don't, don't do, do it in the, the summer. summer. No, I mean it. Like, I mean it. I had, I had kids that came out in the summer yeah. and I was like, you're stupid. Yeah. You've never been in a desert, let alone this desert. I mean, it hits 100 degrees. It's like, I'm like, if you're going to go anywhere, go before 8 in the morning and get back here yeah. where the fans are at the hostel, right? Because if you go after that time, you're going to cook your fucking brain. Nope. The heat stroke, heat stroke, heat stroke. That's, I finally yeah. closed the hostel down. I was like, nope. These idiots come from all over the country, all over the world, and they're like, ah, I'm in the desert. Oh, that's the worst. It. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to be responsible for your heat stroked ass. You know, it's not my problem. So, yeah, I would just like, oh, that's the only thing I would stipulate. Yeah. Don't do it in the summer. Probably watch out for the drug culture that's out there and everything. Oh, they know that. Away. If they're travelers, they know all yeah. about that shit. They're 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 probably part of it. Yeah. And that's you know more power to you, man. You know, it's just not my thing. But yeah, most people that I've met that go out to the desert are just people that are just like, you got a drug, just throw it in my face. They don't even check the quality or anything. Like me, eh, throw it in my face. I'm like. Eh. And it sounds like too, like you said, if you end up if you're down and out and you ain't got shit. You show up, there's, and you're a good person, and you're not going to mouth off, like, you'll get shit, you'll get everything you fucking need. Yeah, but if you got some mental problems, don't go there either. Yeah. There's a lot of mental problems there. I've seen people I had to drive out of there. Yeah. They already had mental problems, they got there, they got on drugs, because it's so prevalent. Yeah. And they fucking fried themselves bad. They got paranoid and fucked up, like young kids. Yeah. And I sent them home. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Call your mama, get bus fare home, and get the fuck out of here because yeah. this place will eat you alive. It will it will either make you or break you. Yeah. It's no joke. It is no joke because it's a consolidation from all over the country of some of the best and some of the worst. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you fall in with, you will fall in with and it will either make you or break you. Yeah. So it is no joke, you know. It's like, it's not like holiday it's it's got its good points and bad points and if that's your lean well yeah. if that's your weakness <laughs> you're in big trouble which I'm sure they know most people who travel know that and it's not just Slab City it's anywhere they go you're gonna find it anywhere you go where travelers are it's like seem, seems to me to be typical for people that are um, on the road and traveling and homeless is uh, any of those categories it's like just drug it out they love what, it what you explained to me though it sounds a lot more enticing like the skate park the canal the hot springs and everything oh, yeah. than going to downtown LA like uh, hey look yeah. I'm gonna try to find a little hovel a little space to fucking sleep in like yeah definitely you know. definitely like I said you'll find anybody from all walks of life there live music everybody just chilling sharing food and yeah, and, yeah nobody gives a fuck you could be whatever you are the weirder the better yeah you know, and you're really appreciated for your musical gifts or your artistic talent or your jokes or whatever. It's like, it's it's awesome. Like I said, the, the, the most, the freest experience I've ever had in my life. I mean, where else can you sit on top of a car driving 70 miles an hour and pretend like you're 
you know, fighting with Darth Vader. You know? You light it on fire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, the shit that we've done out in that desert. Oh, my God. So fun. Blowing shit up. <laughs> Shooting at shit. Like, yeah, you bet. <laughs> Anything goes. Oh, God damn it, I gotta piss again. How about you? How you feeling? Uh, I'm good. You good? Face bagging. Face bag. Okay, let me spank it for you. Spank it? Wee -hee -hee. Yeah, let's move to a cold country, shall we? Look yeah. at us, we're like, me. That's a fucking wrapped up in whatever we can wrap ourselves uh, in. Yeah, and my toes are still frozen. Mine finally warmed up. Oh, but they're still frozen. I don't know about the heat you're talking about there, though. That sounds fucking intense. Yeah, it was. Well, not undoable, though. I don't. I don't remember. I don't have any recollection of suffering. Whereas I do have to say, in Oregon, living in Oregon, I had moments of suffering where I was like, "Good fucking god." With the cold. Yeah, I did too. I'm so sick of being cold. You know, it's yeah. like when I moved out of my bedroom into the living room. And put my bed down on the floor right by the Ben Franklin stove. That the stove was just a piece of shit. Yeah. Like a, a rocket mass stove would have changed the world, right? Yeah. Trying to keep that thing heated. You know, when I put blankets on the on the windows and everything to to insulate it, and still it was a big room. Yeah. But oh my god, I was like, I am so fucking tired of being consistently cold. Didn't you have one of those weird, those fucking, I don't know what it is, a fan, it's a tiny one that when the heat comes up, it makes it, it spins off just the, the heat from the fireplace, like to circulate the air? No, I, I bought a little electric fan oh. that I put behind my stove to yeah. circulate the heat. It was a Ben Franklin stove. They're not designed to heat anything. They're designed yeah. to look at fire. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, uh, now that I know what a rocket mass stove is, it's like, fuck yeah, yeah I would have had that there in a heartbeat. Oh, so many things would have been different knowing now what I, you know, what I know now, I would have done totally different all the way across the board, even just buying that property, but hey, Isn't learned. that interesting though? That's the part that I'm, I'm kind of freaked out about is like the amount of stuff, the information I've gathered on how to collect rainwater, how to right. rocket mass stoves, rocket mass heaters, dehydrators, smokers, fucking just everything in general, hydropower, wind power, solar, like God damn, there's so much more shit that could be ap applicable to a wherever the small fuck you're living. Piece of property too. Yeah. You can you can produce you can produce a lot of food. I think a big problem for a lot of people is preservation, food preservation. Yeah. In a cold climate, if you don't understand how to preserve food, what the fuck are you gonna eat when it's like ice fucking cold? Oh, so it hurts me all about slabs is I'm like, what the fuck did you fucking like how long especially with you're in a fucking place that's 130 something degrees. How the fuck do you keep food? Like you said, you had a carrots that dehydrated, gone. Oh, they cooked in my yeah. car. Uh, you don't eat much. I, I would eat about every other day, once every other day. That's why I was so thin when I got back. But that was part of my experiment too. So I can't judge anybody else but myself. But yeah. you, you know, you just don't, you don't have much of an appetite when it's that hot anyway. Yeah. But I made sure I had plenty of water, good, fresh, clean water, ice water. Um, it's weird when I'm trying to think back, what did I eat? It wasn't much. No. Yeah. You know, like maybe cook some rice and just eat like half a cup of cold rice. Well, you were telling me when we, the few times we spoke when you were there, you were like, oh, yeah, man, you don't need no refrigeration. You could do some stuff. Oh, yeah, I was I like, didn't. whoa, what the fuck is she fucking doing? I didn't. I didn't yeah. need refrigeration. I had... A five-gallon um, drinking water thing that I would put a block of ice into. So I would I was going to town every day at that point. Every day, early in the morning, I'd go every day. People pitched in for gas. Yeah. I'd pick up ice for myself and other people. So I made sure I had five gallons of ice water every day. Yeah. And save some people's lives with that shit. 